Okay, in this quick screen cam, we're going to have a look at an operational amplifier. It's an inverting design, and we're going to have a look at how well this design actually operates, uh, specifically looking at what is its input impedance. First approximation will say that the input impedance is simply that input resistor R1. However, we're going to do a little bit more rigorous check. We're going to come out with a bit more of an equation and find out what's happening. Okay, here, what I'm doing in dotted lines all the way around, effectively, is your operational amplifier. Okay, so that's the op amp. That's where the op amp is at the moment. We have our feedback resistor and we have our input resistor controlling the gain and creating our system. So let's write out a few expressions just so that we know what's happening. We want to know what Z in is. First off, I'm going to define here Z in dashed, so I'm going to ignore the R1 resistor. That's the impedance if we were looking at this point. Okay? So if we do that, we can start to write out quite a few expressions so that we know exactly what we're talking about. Let's just do Z in. Z in should be equal to V over I in. So whatever this current is flowing in here and this voltage source, that should give me Z in. If we go for Z in dashed, okay, Z in dashed, we can ignore that R1 and we can find out what's happening here. So we can do it, we can just go a little bit uh, quicker in effect. If we now look at um, Kirchhoff's current law, we've got current flowing into this node of I in, flowing out in terms of IOP and flowing up here in terms of the feedback value. So we've got I goes I in is equal to IF plus IOP. So we could write that one down as well. So the current flowing in the op amp plus the current flowing in the feedback is equal to the current flowing in in total. If we now do a little bit of a calculation, if we find if we just do a, a little look here at IOP, the input current, okay, must be related to VDM and R in. So I think we should be able to write the current flowing there is equal to VDM, the small voltage difference on the input terminals, over R in, the input impedance of the operational amplifier, this value. So we've already got one calculation done there, and we've got our Kirchhoff's loop. Let's have a look at IF. Let's see if we can do, write an equation for the current in the feedback path. Well, the voltage on this side of the resistor is VDM, and it would go all the way around here. However, there's then a series resistor of R out to get to this voltage source, because we don't necessarily know V out, but we do know this generator. This generator is going to multiply whatever VDM is by the open loop gain and create the voltage source at this node here, so this voltage, we're going to find out. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out the current flowing all the way around in that case. So my node at one side is VDM, that's my voltage at this node of the resistor. We're then going to look at what the difference is. Well the difference, volt, the opposite side voltage is minus a open loop gain VDM. Okay, so I've gone all the way around here and my impedance is effectively RF plus R out. So let's just put a, a value in there RF plus R out. So R out is the output impedance of the op amp, RF is my feedback resistor. So now I've calculated IF. Now if we just tidy that up just a little bit. I mean, I don't like the look of that equation. You've got a double negative here. So if we just tidy that up, we should actually end up with something like VDM into 1 plus A, all bra uh, brackets, all divided by our feedback resistor plus our output resistor, our out. Okay, so all we're doing is just tidy that one up a little bit, and we've got a nice expression at the top there. If we put those two together and calculate I in, my current flowing in is equal to um, the current in the op amp plus the feedback current, which is equal to the current in the op amp, VDM, over R in, plus this new term, VDM, 1 plus A, open loop gain, over RF plus R out.
Okay, so we've now calculated the total current flowing into our circuit. Now if we remember back up here, we defined, um, where was it? Or we should we could, we, uh, we defined z in is v over i in. We could also define this z in dashed. So if we do that, z in dashed must be equal to whatever the current is flowing, which is the same value i in divided by or, or vm divided by that will give us the impedance. So we should have here vdm over i in. Okay, now we've already calculated I in here, so what we've got to do is take this lot and divide through, so we will find that Z in dashed is equal to VDM over I in, as we've found. So we just take VDM. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to write out this expression without VDMs, and I'm going to reciprocate. So there's the VDM on top, the voltage. And then we've got 1 over R in, okay, that's this term, plus this term, okay, so it's 1 plus A open loop gain all over our feedback resistor plus R out, our output resistor, okay. So we've got our input uh, impedance, our feedback impedance, our output of the op amp, and we've got our open loop gain. So all factors we know, and that gives us Z in dash, this value. And we know now that Z in is simply this value plus R1. So we've now calculated Z in for this op amp circuit is R in plus 1 over 1 over R in plus 1 plus A over RF plus R out. Okay, let's just have a little think. We know that R in will be maybe one or two kilo ohms. This looks like a parallel impedance. Okay, this is you know two components in parallel, R in, and in this case R F plus R out. It's not reciprocated here because we've got this gain term on the top. So this gain term on the top, as we know, open loop gain 100,000, 100,000 divided by you know 10k output impedance of say 10 ohms, so the 10k, the feedback resistor really, really dominates, you've got a relatively large number. Put that in parallel with the R in resistor, reciprocate, you've got your parallel components, and add that to R in. So it depends upon the values of RF and the devalues of the open loop gain. If you've got a very, very large value feedback resistor, for example, uh, you know, one mega ohm, um, because you've got such a large output, it, you will not have much of a contribution from this component or from this section, and it will be dominated by R in. However, if you've got a modest value of RF, you know, 50k, open loop gain 100,000, you can easily see that you've got 2 over, uh, two over 1. So, you, so you've, got a, you've got a number here that's going to start to start to have some kind of an effect on R in. So this will have an effect but it is limited and it does depend. So this is the portion that's new and this is what we already guessed. Most of the time this value R in will be quite accurate. I hope this screen cam was useful.